Hello, comrades. It's Premier Rever here again. I am back for another episode in our small little town here in Portska. I guess we have to give our town a name, huh? Well, why don't we call it something along the lines of coal? Because we've got coal right in our back door right now, yeah? So, I don't know if you, <clears throat> excuse me, are aware of this, but if we come to construction, name, create an area city, and like this, say we click here, it's called Baetis or something. We can rename it. So why don't we call it Colesque? The thing that made me think of that was, let me, da, 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 drum roll, <laughs> quite a bit of work here, but we got, you know, amber fields of grain, you know, kind of leveled out pretty well all the way over there, so we've got, you know, there's nine right here and then another three, so we've got 12 fields of grain, you may notice that our rubles went down to below 400,000, but we now have a full complement of tractors pretty much I got one extra space but three regular four regular tractors to go out and do the sewing and then four harvesters wait oh, I have three harvesters oh, that's correct now. by the way especially because I can get a harvester Gosh. So there we go so we got four harvesters four wagons to chase them you know, whatever we can get out of it, I think it's keeping them busy. Every time I look out there, people are doing stuff. So, when I look over here, this guy seems to be rolling around with food. But the liquor guy, he's not even there. Yeah, so we're not buying liquor anymore. Well, we have it set as a backup, just so you know. Like, I didn't take off buying it in case something happens to our system. You know, same thing here. Well, I did take it off the food, but I probably should put it back on, thinking about it. Like, why not have it on there? We're not going to buy any until things go bad. And then when things go bad, we'll buy it from the whoever, you know? So, keep people happy. So, in any event, I have my construction office open here. And that is because I have two projects going on simultaneously. We have the brick factory. And brick factory requires a lot of bricks, as it turns out good amount of steel so we will be making bricks fairly soon and I find that that's a pretty low cost way of, of getting some money going early and at this point we still are generally losing money even with the big huge farm so now eventually we'll get the meat going but I looked at it too and we have 101 tons of bricks here and another 28 tons right there, so just making the bricks will save save us a fair chunk on the slaughterhouse. Plus, in addition, we'll export them. One of the main reasons this isn't the greatest time to start a video, there's not much that I plan on doing at this moment, except for one thing, and it has it, it's in relation to building this building. Taking a look and understanding the population, we now have our educated population down to 200, uneducated population down to 278, which means our school can handle more people, right? So if we were to come into here and look, we can come up here and say, invite 10 immigrants. Now you just wanna make sure it's a place that they can get to school because they're gonna take them from the third world. Now these people may escape from you, but they only cost a thousand bucks. So if you can get them in, get them jobs, keep them happy, I don't think they escape too bad, you know? If we take, let's just take another quick look at this year. It's April, so it's kind of far. You can see we're really stagnating on the population. Last year, we grew like gangbusters, but now we're kind of stagnating. Some of that is because we stopped to do the school thing and, you know, people went off to school, I guess, and didn't have as many babies. So hopefully we'll you know, keep a nice natural growth. I could see, oops, I didn't necessarily mean to shut that. You could see where we have a lot more children than babies, but we still have a decent number. But really we don't have that many productive age workers. 
So one of the ways to up this is to get immigrants. So what we should actually do is look for one of these that's kind of low in numbers. Yeah, they're, they're all doing fairly well. Over 50 is... I don't want to add another 10 to one. There you go. This guy only has 38. So let's go up here. Invite 10. Boom. Now he's got 48. Now, they're not going to be educated at all, so they have to go to school. But at least they they add to your population, you know? So, and, and they don't cost me rubles. <laughs> That's the other truth. So, boom. We'll take some more there. Yeah, this one, you know, kind of on the borderline of whether I would, would do that or not. But, you know, we'll, we'll just do it because we don't have any other place to put it. Now, this building here that I'm building, I am going to, whenever, if you look, there's other buttons up there. One's just right, regu invite regular immigrants, and this one is invite uh, immigrants from the Soviet bloc. Five experts. So this is university-educated people. And we don't want the number of university-educated people to drop too low. Because if it does, then what's going to happen is we're not going to be able to teach people in school and then everything will spiral down, you know, a lot. As it is, if we look at the school stats, you'll see there's a lot of kids in there. So a lot of kids get educated before, before they ever get out. So now, unfortunately, we don't seem to have a huge number of people wanting to teach. I wish there was a way you could say move teachers from... I'll relocate with university degrees, so that's what we'll do. I'm sorry. But I guess you can't do it with teachers. But So what we'll do is, when we get this building built, we'll assign at least a good number of people to work at this building. And then we'll remember it because it's, at this point, the closest. If that makes sense. So there you go. So we have some more people come in. If we go back and look at our this year's stats, all of a sudden we got another little spike up. So... You know, now whether those people will stay or try to escape, it sort of depends on how happy they are. But as you can see from the overall happiness, you know, people seem reasonably content to be here. And, yeah, that's about it. Um, like I have lined up like five more houses, you know, trying to grow our population naturally through children as much as I can. But obviously give it a bump up whenever it doesn't overwhelm the school system. And right now it's sort of, because a lot of those people aren't going to work in the school, it seems like we've got a problem. But again, I can get that straightened out too, I hope. <laughs> we'll see. The game has to tend to bite you in the butt when you, uh, when you don't pay attention to the smallest thing, which, which is something I enjoy about it. You know, it makes it more of a challenge at that point. So. So there you go, big open farm fields. Um, let's just take a quick look. See, I haven't really looked myself. Uh, last month's economy probably would be a decent one to look at. Did I build some stuff? Yeah, I did build some. Gravel, 5,000. I probably just mostly built roads, a little bit of cement, but nothing major. So we could probably take, you know, 6,000 off of that number. And we were down 8,000. So, see, even if we didn't do any construction last month, we still would have lost, like, two grand. So. So, but once we start selling some bricks, I think we'll, we'll get, make that back. And like I said, before I come back in the episode, unless something else strikes me, I will get us working on our, since we got our corn going, or our corn crops going so well, uh, we'll, we'll get the get the animals going as well and then we'll have sort of three sources of regular income that should make us a little money get us profitable and once we recover some of our funds we can you know I can see about getting the coal mine going but that's sort of two steps away all right well I'll be keep building I'll keep building up the town and I will talk to you guys in, in a little bit something exciting goes on Well, overseeing some construction. I'd like to show you guys what I have accomplished in the last, uh, I don't know, period of time. Half hour, 45 minutes, maybe less. <clears throat> anyway, we got our houses going, so I've been keeping an eye on 
the number of workers. You can see very few uneducated workers. So it might be a good time to start working on these, on one of these houses. But I've also pretty consistently have a jam up here with trucks. So I need to, I want to get that other silo going so I can get this other, this looks see like they're waiting for a tractor there before anybody can leave or come in or out. These guys are doing what? Load. Why are you not leaving? See, he's just waiting. So this guy, if he was over at his own grain mill, could get the transfer going a lot faster. Plus, he's now slowing these guys from getting all the stuff off the field. So it's a little bit of a low priority um, in some ways. But anyhow, we, we're dealing with it <laughs> it's, because it's working, you know, like... So I want to get the, the, now that we got our brick factory, this will make this a little bit less expensive. We're kind of holding our own on money. It's a little hard to tell at this point in the game when you're spending so much. But I'm certainly, we're certainly doing better than we were. I just went down a chunk probably because I bought some steel from one of these. Yeah, so this guy needs 41 steel. So I think I have enough money to do both. You know, this one doesn't need so much steel, needs panels, needs bricks. But again, the bricks are not free because we're paying for the coal, but, you know, they're, they're cheaper. So there we go. The brick operation is doing, eh, okay. I mean, it's it's selling. Uh, we're making money. Like I said, I think it's actually got us to the point that if we weren't spending so much, we could actually save up a couple bucks. But I wanted to get the remainder of our agriculture things done. Kind of jumped over to do that. I, and I'm liking the way it turned out. You can see I built the roads. Um, I'm going to show you what I did with the trucks. Open haul. He's a construction truck. So here's a brick truck. This guy is just going, waiting for a load, and then he's going over to the import house. The other ones, yeah, this is another one. I actually have them stopping by here. There's three of them total. So that, that way, if they're, you know, if they're waiting for bricks there's three four spots here so there's plenty of plenty we might even add another one if we ramp things up but at this point you know people tend to be part of the problem you know we don't we don't have a massive number of people in fact it almost seems like our population go down no it didn't go down but it's you know we had a few escapes and a few deaths well this that's this year this year how are we doing for the year yeah, we had a lot of deaths. So we've barely made up for the deaths with the extra immigrants that we took on. Maybe an extra 20 people. But I need to get some more houses built. I'll probably build another one over here. We're going along. You know, it's uh, it's coming around. It's <laughs> it's kind of a long slog, but you, you feel like you did a lot of work, and you did. And you know, before you actually start seeing some results. You know, it takes quite a while for for all of this to come together, you know. So, sorry there's not too much more to report, but I didn't want to go too far ahead, you know, without showing you what things close that window. Without showing you what things look like at this point. What is this guy? Oh he's held up by oh he just ran the tractor guy over. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 look at this. See that's getting a bit silly now. Why are you all... Oh, because you're waiting... See, they... Well, they always wait for a guy to come out. So that's part of the problem, too. If there... Two of them might sneak in, but then if one does, like, a loop-de-loo in here before he goes back out, they may not... They may not move. Now, the third one may or may not make it in here. Depends on... Yeah, okay, he's going to make it in good. With the tractor wall. And then we got another one. So, yeah, we need to get this silo built. Because a lot of the traffic, believe it or not, is probably just coming from this guy. And his job is just to drive back and forth, drive back and forth. So, and then the good news is, is we have two spots here. We'll be able to put a second truck if we really, if we want. Just boom, back and forth. I don't know if that'll keep up. But it'll make, you know, make maximize out the system. There we go. Yeah, see, and, and even then we're kind of backing up with stuff. Because we just don't have that many people making food. But they'll come. It comes with time. I don't have a ton of money to buy them in from Russia. Or, or the Soviet states. So, so 
So we'll see. We steam to pretty be pretty steady running our bricks, which is good. Now look, we got 15, 15, 19 people in there at the moment. Good. All right. Well, there you go. So I will. Uh, I will be back when all of this is built and I've got it humming a little bit, and we can say that we can get ready to save up money for for all of this. All right. See you in, see you in a minute. Okay, progress once again has been made, which it always gets made, just doesn't always go in the right direction, right? So anyway, I uh, wanted to describe to you guys a brief moment what I do here when it comes to the construction. I have this crew here, two buses, two of the flatbed trucks, two concrete mixers, a covered truck, which, you know, doesn't get used that much, a crane, a bulldozer, an excavator and two dump trucks. Now, when you first start out a project, like I just started this grain storage, right? And the grain storage requires asphalt, concrete, and gravel. And the groundworks almost always requires some combination of those three things. Well, they're going to need the dump trucks and they're going to need the excavator. And that's how they're going to smooth it out. So if we zoom in on this one, you know, you'll see them showing up here, you know, hopefully sooner than later. Here, let me speed it up a little bit. So there goes a bus dropping off some people for us. We got 17 workers. Oh, we got another bus. Yeah, you know what? I got them all down that other construction site. So, so here comes the, uh, you know, gravel. And then we should have a concrete truck coming. Oh, that's an asphalt truck. It doesn't say a problem with the concrete guy. Where is the concrete guy? Uh, any minute now, the concrete guy should show up. Might even need two concrete guys. Oh, no, 12 tons? I think he can do 12 tons. Oh, uh, the concrete guys. Yeah, I guess... See, this is one thing that happens. The flatbeds were busy when, this pro when I started doing this project. So he probably started driving over here. But you... If you just start a fresh project, the flatbed will actually bring the excavator over. Uh, otherwise, if they're busy hauling for another job, they might not might not get there in time. But anyway, there you go. Let me slow it back down a bit. So this, oh, we're still waiting on the asphalt. So for all that activity, we didn't get any asphalt. Sometimes it seems like they come by with nothing in them. Where's my asphalt? Oh, there it is. And this asphalt plant has problems too because he's kind of he's kind of far away from people he doesn't need much he just needs like one guy in there to keep me happy but he doesn't always get that one guy he needs but anyway here we are back at the job let's fast forward the asphalt will be here i'm just going to keep fast forwarding and then relatively quickly this will be done and what the next phase is almost always pretty similar in the sense now in this case well, no, it needs asphalt from the first phase. It'll need things like boards and steel and concrete and bricks. So what I usually end up being able to do is split this off into like two crews kind of naturally, so to speak, you know? So I'll show you what I mean in one, one minute here. We don't have, well, we have plenty of people. That's a, it's a bigger job than normal. But basically, these guys are now done delivering. Now, we do have, we don't have another excavator on this crew, so a lot of times what I'll do is just wait at this point and fast forward. It shouldn't be too bad. And it's just a small footprint on a bigger, bigger thing. It would take longer. But then what you can end up doing is, like, I'll come over here to this, this. Now, by the way, this is where I end up. So now I sign this road. Well, that... If we look at what the road needs, it just needs some gravel. So the issue that you end up with is that you split your manpower in half. And I'm not sure if that's effective or not. But it does get those dump trucks and the excavator over to here. Right? So you are using more of your equipment more of the time. That's, you know, why I like to do it that way. Now, the reason I don't like to do it that way is it seems to cause a lot of crashes when I do. So, so anyway... There you go. This is pretty much, pretty much what I do. Is, 
to sit there and manage each one and you know build the build the roads when I can and you know, go from there. So I did just get the thing that we completed was this bus stop. So let me, let me slow down. I don't like to think too fast sometimes. So I'm going to say like no students and no passengers because we just we don't want them here. And I need to come over to here and we don't have any buses here, right? I have oil tank cars here. So we need to get another bus. Uh, I don't know that, it, again, it doesn't really need to be the biggest bus. I wish if there was a fuel efficiency See, that's got, what, 62 people? I don't know if it's any better. It's certainly more expensive. Man, this does 52. It's 75. You know what? We're going to go with one of them. Oops, I didn't mean to clean the clothes. All right, so now we have our bus. And what I need to do is say... Oops, went too far. Bus stop here is going to go over to bus stop here. And... You can start. Another thing I want to do is I think I don't know, these people are good enough. So I'm just gonna like I don't wanna say force, but you know, send some more people this way. So they should have a fair number coming in here each time. You know, we don't have a lot of people for all the industry we're just opening up now, but hopefully that'll come during a big project, you know, keep an eye on it. And, I, and I'm steadily importing people. So when we get to this bus stop, it says unspecified. Well, what we can do is say, I want you to go to here, and I want you to go to here. Now, in the past, I left this on 50-50. Things seemed to go okay. But I really didn't play it that long to really study whether that was the right proportion. You know, this needs 50 workers. This needs 50. But... For, for other reasons, you may want, you know, you may want a few more on the livestock end to make sure you're always getting more into the slaughterhouse. We don't need overly much meat. So, speaking of meat, we might as well get the meat truck, which will be a refrigerated truck. And, and probably, I always check. You know, I probably should stop at some point because they do pop up new new trucks once in a while. So we get the choice of one refrigerated truck. Click on that. And what I want him to do is, I want you to go from, oh, oh boy, I'm aggressive tonight. I want you to go from the meat packing or the slaughterhouse. I want you to stop by my grocery store? the grocery store. And then I want you to go to there. I'm not going to store any meat at this point. At some point, if we have like more towns, and I feel like doing that, but the meat guy here doesn't save store enough. That like we're not going to get that many loads of meat, especially not to start. So let's. Uh, yeah, he'll he'll only get meat. This is a big thing to watch out for. Oh, I just closed it. Where would he go? Oh, he's still sitting there because I didn't start. This is something to look out for. This says unload meat. We want to do it at the grocery store. Every time you put one in, kind of, it, it does every other. So put this guy on unload. And then the other thing we want him to do is we want him to wait. We don't want him to drive back and forth constantly. And so he can go sit in our, our slaughterhouse. Let's hope. Do we people yet? Did we get a bus yet? Do we have power? No, we have no power. Oh, a little substation down here. Issue. And this one I'm just going to buy for dollars. Power lines don't seem to want to go in. Like it says not connected to the road. Well, you know. Alright, do we have power now? Yes, we do. Alright, good. Right. Did we get people in here? Bus just came by. Do we have anybody coming in here yet? Okay, we've got 16 people waiting. So we should get a bod next time they next time it comes down and we can see. Oh wait, we got five people in here. Oh, I don't know. Somehow, I guess I was too fast. I didn't see them. Or too slow, whichever way you look at that. Good, well we've got meat. Uh, did the truck make it in alright? No. So 
coming. Feels like he should be here by now. Oh, you know what? Something's going on, and I don't understand. It's a lot of these commercial trucks going around this way, so it takes them a little longer to get someplace. So they're going around the long way instead of going through town where all those people are walking. Alright, so there, there's our beat truck. Yeah, and this guy got a 0.26 meat. So. Good. But we're down to $26,000. And that's because I decided to, and I hope I didn't make a mistake. How much is the steel price? Because it, it can go up one year. I've never seen it go back down yet. That's not too bad. 552. I've, I've gotten it up to like 800 before, so. Watch out for that if you're figuring on the price of a, of a thing, of, a, of the machine. But this, we've already just bought those, so we have 12, so we only need to go get, if we haven't bought them, you know, a little bit. $3,000 worth, a little over that. So we're, we're in good shape. And the bricks aren't free again, but they're pretty cheap. And, Concretes. We can pay for the concrete probably just with the profit that we should be making. How is our bricks doing? Yeah, look, we got bricks sitting in the yard. So that means we're just steady humping bricks. Now, you know, we're probably using some of those bricks for this construction, so we're not going to make quite as much money for that moment. Let me take a look there. I hope I'm not all over the place for you guys. Yeah, look, $18,000. Now, we've spent... 31,000, but let's take a look at what we spent it on. You know, steel, 17,000, right there. We could have paid for all those construction materials except for the steel. Right, so well, that's just this, well, that's this month. That's probably quite a bit of the construction. So we're, once we get out of this, you know, once we get everything pumping along, we should be, uh, I bet you we're going to make $15,000 a month or so, maybe even twenty. dollars um, We'll see. You know, just based on those numbers there, because if you take seventeen dollars off and, you know, we spent thirty one, that's and that's that wasn't quite a full month, so so we should be uh, we should be in pretty good shape. You know, and what I'll probably do at that point is you know, if I figure out anything exciting to do, but I really just want to save up the money to get this power plant going. And let's not underestimate the price of steel too much, right? So let's say that's 300 bits of steel just there. These mechanical components aren't cheap. That's another 10,000. So this is, you know, if it's 300, you know, that's in the neighborhood of 18,000 or $1,800. No, $180,000, sorry. And then we have electronic components, and you know, so we're talking, you know, we're we're talking over two hundred grand to build that power plant. And this, yeah, there's another, well over a hundred grand, hundred and twenty. And then the coal mine, not not nearly as bad. I might even get started on that because it takes quite a while. Well, I'll get started on each component as I go. And then the conveyors, you can't can't neglect them as far as the cost goes you know they they each end up taking taking money so the first thing we'll probably do is just get it built around to here if that makes sense so i might do that off camera for something to do while while the money goes up i'm not sure i don't want to i mean you guys watching this go up so slowly you know a lot of times i walk away from it when it's on fast forward and Sometimes the game crashes, and if it goes bad, they usually have the, you know, the saves every so many minutes, and I'll turn it back to a save if something catastrophic happened. You know. Anyway, but it's going pretty well so far on this this go through, and uh, hopefully uh, it keeps going well. How's our how's our grain storage going? Uh, that coal mine open anymore? Really don't need the construction office open anymore. We're, we're getting there. So what I'll do is when this is done, I'm going to take this guy and just switch him to drive back and forth between these two. Um, 
another bit of efficiency no and I didn't really realize it until I switched back but it's faster if these guys are near their materials in this construction depot so you would think nah, but well because they come out of here and then they go right and pick up their first load from here and then go there well I really noticed it when they started doing this driving around thing because they were they were at this construction depot well they would drive all the way up and around and over and then they would drive all the way back you know to build something over here it's like well even though they're driving around at least when they start over there that's it's not like they're doing it twice so uh, yeah you're better off i think with your construction guys close to where they're going to get most of their supplies anyway so if we do another remote construction thing i'll probably even try to set up some kind of a shuttle of supplies out there for the construction vehicles but that's a whole nother uh whole nother question for another day but we're getting we're getting there i don't know how much more i mean we definitely have iron here it's awful expensive to get into we'll have to see how much money the power plant makes us you know at some point here the game is just the game the prices isn't is it the prices aren't any different so once i get to a certain point of making money it should get you know easy as a lot of the other playthroughs my uh my goal is to get like 16 million dollars which is like the start where other people are starting at you know <laughs> like, but then again i'll have all this equipment in by that point i don't think there's any place tells you your net worth does it i mean i know this says resources yeah what is our most oh look at that is that our electronics well those aren't cheap are they so the most valuable thing we have is elect oh no, clothes. Well, we'll have to look into doing electronics and clothes at some point. But that's, once again, a problem for another day. So there we go. There's our little town. It's coming along. You know, we actually have a few industries now. It's been a struggle. You know, it's, some of it is, yeah, it's just, it's been a struggle to get to where we're at, so. We'll see. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.